Hi everyone, welcome to The Parenting Pickup, a podcast simply made to help families with trending topics and so much more. We are positive you will pick up tidbits of helpful tips, tricks, activities, and advice when listening to our podcast. I'm your host, Kara. Hello, and welcome back to the Parenting Pickup Podcast. We're thrilled to have Sarah Reichstadt with us today. She's our special guest, and Sarah is the Education Coordinator at Kinderbury Hill, which means she knows the ins and outs of play and why it's so important for children. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you, Kara. It's nice to be here. We are just so happy you're here. So I'm just going to kick it off by asking you, why is play so important? Play... Really, the importance of play is children learn about themselves. They figure out who they are. They understand, you know, they start to understand what it is they're really good at or what they like to do. They also have to make so many decisions and choices that all of that builds to self-esteem and confidence. And if you read any research about play, you're always going to hear You know, it's building self-esteem, it's building confidence, plus a lot of other things. But that's through all this time to make decisions and make choices and learn about themselves. Also, when you think about play in groups, they've got to be able to share their ideas um, and listen and negotiate with others, too. And all that really helps form them as a person. Absolutely. I, I you know, the, what you said about it building confidence, that totally makes sense to me. I never thought about like the collaborative piece because that's where they learn that whole give and take. Yeah. I had this great idea. Now I need to convince you it's great and we should do it. <laughs> life skills. That's a, absolutely what an amazing life skill for them to be able to use. Yeah. So how else does play promote learning? I think when children play, they explore their curiosity. And when you're exploring curiosity, that's how you're learning, right? And that's how children learn best. So when children are playing, they're testing their ideas, they're trying things they're curious about, they're exploring, discovering, that all is just building their love of learning. Yes, that makes a a lot of wonderful sense. What about, what can we do at home to encourage more play? I feel like children tend to be scheduled a lot with swimming lessons and kind of all the things, you know, we have to go grocery shopping. And so how do you carve out that time to play? Because it sounds like it's super important. Yes. I think the first thing we need to think about as families is how much we prioritize it. You know, like you said earlier, we're going to make sure that, you know, maybe we want value eating as a family. Maybe we value swimming lessons or piano lessons. Um, But do we value time for play in the same way? And do we prioritize its benefits as much as some of the other benefits that we schedule in? Another way that we can encourage um, play at home would be the limiting of electronics. As parents, myself included, I sometimes find a need to entertain children, to entertain my kids and make sure they've got, you know, things going on. And, you know, it's easy to say, you can watch this show for a little bit. And after that, we'll go for the bike ride. But if we were to limit these Um, entertainment needs and pull back the electronics a little bit, then we can squeeze in more time for them to play. Um, And even just playing alone, you know, parents are busy. (laughs) And so just being really mindful that that alone play is still really beneficial for children and to take a minute and maybe make decisions. Maybe they feel bored for just a minute and then they have to decide what they're going to do. We're building their self-reliance. And so um, I think we need to really think about when we're always entertaining, what are we um, taking away from children by not letting them have that time to play alone or with others? Right. That's an interesting perspective. I didn't think about that before, but I agree. Like when I'm making dinner, I use electronics to entertain the children because then I can cook and see where they are and what they're doing. And really, they could play with blocks. They could play with musical instruments. They could grab pots and pans and have a musical band if they want or pretend to cook along. So that that's an interesting way to look at it because I feel like, you know, I agree that electronics are a quick and easy way to get children to kind of focus and you can keep them in your sights, yes. but you miss out on that important play, which is so important and needed for development and 
that curiosity, I think your comment about curiosity is really sticking in my brain right now and thinking about how really in life, it is the people who are most curious that are probably the most successful because that's how inventions happen. That's how we get electric cars and electricity and kind of all those things. It was someone being curious and that play helps children be curious. So as a parent, what else can we do besides time? What other suggestions do you have? As we prioritize play, Let's do also, though the solitary play, the playing by themselves has so many benefits. Don't forget when parents and adults play, that's huge for development as well. First of all, just connection. When we're playing with our children, they feel valued and important and listened to. Um, but as adults, we can also reinforce some of those developing skills. It could be something um, as simple as saying, oh my gosh, your train track is really big. You put a lot of work into that. You put all of these pieces together. You did it. Good for you. Just something little that just reinforces, you know, we see your hard work and you are doing, you know, that's your work. Also, we can reinforce social things. Like if you're playing with your children and the little one is taking something away, you can say, you're being really patient. She's learning how to share, but I can see that you're being patient. You're doing it. These are kind of perks that we can use as adults when we play with children. Also just simple questions like, have you ever thought about or what would happen if? And I was in a classroom the other day and the children had such an interest in the car wash. And they had taken a box, turned it into the car wash, and then they were pretending, they were saying to each other, when I drive it in, pretend the wheels aren't turning because they had realized in a car wash there's like a conveyor belt. All the adult, all the teacher did was say, oh, you're talking about a conveyor belt. That's when you park your car and the belt moves the car through. How could you build that? And the children just went onto it. And that's like one of the benefits that being, um, being attentive and observant. Observant, thank you. <laughs> being an observant um, play partner as an adult, you can scaffold that play to be a little more um, challenging for the children. So I think those are, you know, kind of key parts of play, if as a family we really value it, there's so many benefits we can give children. Agreed. That's a lovely story to think about how a group of young children just became inventors because a teacher explained a conveyor belt and how it works in a car wash. Challenge them just, you know, to take their play a little bit further, a little bit harder for them, you know, a little more of a engineering challenge, yeah. And I really liked when you talked about that as a parent, it's an opportunity to kind of coach some of those social skills, pointing out patience and turn taking your turn. That is really a nice opportunity to do it in a more natural way than trying to lecture or in the moment where there's a heated issue, um, it's harder, you know, to listen um, for the child and children involved. So that's a really nice and natural way to be able to make that connection. Yep, and it has more meaning to children during play. You know, we're all having this good time together. The, the meaning and the learning is so natural. Sure, a lecture over dinner time doesn't <laughs> yeah. uh, land as well <laughs> right. um, as when it's happening in the moment and you're having a good time. Yeah, that's fun. That, that's really great. And I think it is a nice reminder to parents just to remember you should play too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let the children lead, but hop in and enjoy. <laughs> Absolutely. My favorite was when my boys wanted to be the parent and I was able to be the child. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> that was my bad. favorite. <laughs> yes, exactly. It was so much fun. So tell me, how should parents set up successful play experiences? I think, well, there's a couple things. First of all, when you're looking at your children's toys, think about swapping out a little bit. Um, for example, I'll just use Matchbox cars. We'll say there's a basket of Matchbox cars that's always out. They play with a couple, you know, of their favorites. What if you were to divide those, divide those a little bit? Children play differently with race cars than they do fire trucks. You know, just kind of rotating in to um, challenge them to think and play differently with their toys. Um, also, authentic materials, so real life items, if you can throw those into their play area sometime, if they might have a play food set or a play kitchen. As a parent, I can just put a couple pots or pans and a wooden spoon, just 
pop it in there and it changes their play. I might take a suitcase and put some of my shoes or a hat or a, you know, sports coat or something in the suitcase and just put it in their dress up area. This just changes their play, keeps it fresh, keeps them curious about, you know, exploring play with new items. Also, if you're gonna think about, um, maybe you need a minute <laughs> and you're wanting them to sit and be engaged for a little bit within your site, it's kind of nice to set up what I would call a play experience for children. Um, you can use the same old materials you've got. Um, it might be the rug at the foot of my bed and I take it and I put it under a lamp and I put a little basket of Legos and a basket of seashells, line them up and put a Lego guy on each shelf. That is the same stuff that they've been playing with, but I've created a little experience for them. So it invites them in to come be curious and explore. And those are nice ways to get them engaged with the toys that they see every day, but it's just in a new way. I love that idea. I had never thought of that before in terms of taking things that you already have and setting it up in a new way so they explore it in a different manner. Cozy little <laughs> experience for them to explore, yeah. Yeah, just new ways to look at things. I really like that. I, at our house once, uh, we put a little Batman and we froze him. We put him in an ice block and then the, my boys had to save him oh, and yeah, ship yeah, him out yeah. and figure out how can they melt the ice to get Batman out, yes. um, which was really kind of fun. Things like taking, you know, you'll say, oh, do you want to do art? And you've got the watercolors that you've used every time and the kids are like, nah, nah don't want to do that, <laughs> that again. Even just putting it out on like a placemat and instead of the paintbrush, you're gonna use Q-tips, or maybe you're just gonna put the water in a beautiful vase instead of, you know, just a plastic cup. Little things like that draw children in more and get them to explore differently. I think that's really wise advice because it's just taking things we already have. So we don't have to buy anything special. We don't have to get anything with bells and whistles. Just take things that we already have and kind of repurpose them or um, and kind of engage children by making it feel different and look different. Like I had not thought about painting with a Q-tip or you could paint with a feather or, yes, yes. you know, with a leaf or um, just trying some of those using media and materials in different ways. Mm -hmm. Paint on cardboard, magazines, just little stuff around the house that uses their things they're familiar with differently. So you mentioned loose parts and I know that that's something that you do at Kinderbury Hill really well. And anytime I've ever visited, it's just amazing to see loose parts in action. So can you tell us about how Kinderbury Hill uses loose parts? Yes, we love our loose parts. <laughs> loose parts are anything that doesn't have a specific purpose. So uh, purpose for play, I should say. So if you give a child a car, they're typically gonna play cars. Um, when I give them Maybe it's a wood round or a canning ring. It can be anything. If I give them a wood round, they might say it's a pancake. They might say it's a wheel. Um, it's just objects, usually found objects, can, might be from nature, um, that you can add to play and children need to be creative with it. The other great piece of loose parts is it takes cooperation, collaboration for children to use those. If I say the wood round is a pancake, you need to agree with me for the play to be successful. You can't take it and say it is a steering wheel because then we aren't playing the same thing. And so loose parts have a lot of, um, a lot of bang for their buck in thinking about creativity and collaboration. So we use those and some of our favorites might be the seashells, the canning rings, the wood rounds, um, corks, anything like that, buttons. All of those just add them to your toy shelf and see what the children do. I bet that's just fascinating to watch and seeing that each child can look at the same thing and come up with something different. And it's really nice to have a loose part that really enhances that curiosity and gets them thinking through innovation and how things are used. And then that piece of collaborating with their peers on that, this is this is a pancake. We all agree this is a pancake yes. and we're going to make pancakes <laughs> and this is how it works. And then maybe someone else turns it into the steering wheel and then they're all driving around. So that's just a really clever and interesting way to get children thinking and opening up kind of 
the way that they're thinking and approaching materials and will help them with learning. Yes, and depending on the materials, it's amazing to watch children create art with the loose parts, um, patterns, the way they line up things. And you walk over and you'll say, tell me about your play. And they'll tell you exactly what their purpose is of every seashell, every cork, every, and it's really fascinating to listen to them talk about their creativity. That's a lot of fun. What other resources do you recommend for, for families to encourage play? You know, things to think about. Um, we don't always think about adding light to play. So if we think about just those push button flashlights, a few of those out, um, tea lights, glow sticks, things like that can really enhance play, can really get children creating longer, sitting longer. So I would say thinking about ways to add light um, is a great addition to your, your toy shelf. Also, if you, when you're doing that creating of the space, even music. Lots of families have those little home projectors. Mm -hmm. Just to project like a construction site on the wall and then put their blocks and dump trucks in front of it. It's just a little elevating it a little bit that will draw them in and keep them longer. Oh my gosh, I love that idea. I think that would be so much fun to put a construction scene up on the wall and let yes. children create or put up a restaurant and give them pots and pans and let them pretend yes. that they are, are cooking for customers in a restaurant and yes. delivering the food. How much yes. fun would that be? And, and not that hard to do. No, so many families have the projector. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That's fantastic. Well, we're at the point in our um, podcast where we answer questions from families. So um, we had some families share questions that they had about um, the importance of play. And so we have a question from Wes. And Wes said, my child never wants to play outside. How can I make it more enticing? Ah, playing outside. Yes. Um... First of all, as parents, we need to go outside, right? We can't just open the patio door and say, I'll call you in for dinner. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but if we go out, enjoy, and show that we enjoy the outdoors, children will feel more comfortable. Also, taking items they're really familiar with, take the Legos out on the picnic table. Put a little rug on the patio and throw your matchbox cars out there. They will build comfort with being outside, find more joy in being outside. And so you can start them that way and eventually they'll run off the patio and be running in the backyard. <laughs> That's a really simple thing to do as a parent. You're basically just extending the learning outside. And I know Kinderbury does that. Yes. So, so how does Kinderbury do that, taking learning outside? So we, our schools have outdoor classrooms and the outdoor classrooms are um, used throughout the year Basically, anything you can do inside, you can do outside. Um, another great thing that we use in our outdoor classrooms that you could use at home, I would say bigger loose parts in your backyard, something as simple as milk crates. Um, we have a lot of milk crates. Those are great for building. Um, sticks, rocks, all that stuff, when it's piled up, becomes loose part play material. So thinking about hunting up some of those in your backyard and gathering them for organizing for resources of play for kids. That's great. And again, easy things for parents, for us to be able to gather and use in the backyard. And then I know the classrooms at Canterbury, the outdoor classrooms are, are certified. Yes, they are. We are Nature Explore certified. So we've got different areas designated for different types of play, big body play, art area, block and building play. They're so loved <laughs> by our children, yes, and that's, teachers. That's great. And you even have a mud kitchen. Yes, we do. We've got mud kitchens. Our um, outdoor classroom days are usually pretty dirty, and that's what we want. We've got mud kitchens and uh, music areas, stages, um, climbing areas, block areas, gardens all sorts of fun things and as parents yeah, they're great <laughs> we can incorporate some of that too I know I have a garden in my backyard and what's better than inviting my children to help tend the garden you know as as they are able based on their age that would be 
an easy thing to do is just incorporate them into helping with the garden. Um, Even thinking about the garden, think about plants that are really, really hardy. Can you tuck those in one corner of the garden so they can run dump trucks or dinosaurs in there? That's a nice play opportunity for children outside to get them in the Absolutely. I know my boys would love running dump trucks through mud. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> that would be so much fun. Or can you leave a spot where they get to dig? Exactly. I remember that, you know, digging in the backyard is can be kind of controversial, but <laughs> it, it it's very so loved fun. by if children. You have, yes. If you have a spot that you're like, this is your digging spot, and yes. they dig there and not other places, it yes. certainly could work. That's great. Um, another parent, um, Aaron, sent in a question saying, what toys or materials should I buy my child to have the best play experience? I think the best toys are actually the loose parts. Things that you don't really, I mean, you don't really have to buy those. Um, they require the most thought. And so I think the best toys would be loose parts. Another loose part, also blocks are a loose part. Any any type of block. It doesn't have to be the plastic, the Duplo. It could be just wooden, square, cube blocks. <laughs> Those have so much education and creativity in them. So I would say loose parts are the most important for children to have available to them with play. I agree. And what's nice about that is that anyone can get that. It's not a super expensive electronic toy. It's just things that are much more affordable and easy to use. And now we know we can use them indoors and outdoors um, and really find ways to use them, you know, as blocks or they can use them as something else um, and using their creativity, which is great. Um, our, oh, go ahead. My son is a rock collector still to this day, but when we were younger, every time we went on walks, his pockets would come full home with special rocks that he found on our walk. Even those, easy, and still playing with them today. Sure, sure. That's great. Easy, and it's nice that that's really child-led. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. Our last question comes from Richard, who says, um, Our schedules are jam-packed, and we are always running around. How do we find time for meaningful play? That is the question. All of our schedules are so busy. Every family is just packed, but... I think if we just think about play is really connecting in a joyful way with our children. So we might be busy standing in line at the grocery checkout, but we can still play. We can still look at our children and play a rhyming game or I'm thinking of something and describe it. Um, finger plays on their hand. Um, even those drives in the car, we're sitting in traffic. Roll, stop, roll, stop. You can still have a conversation or play a game or tell a story. Those are all ways busy families can still connect and play together. Because there are times when the schedule is just too much. <laughs> so as long as you're together, you can connect and play if you know we're intentional about those opportunities. I, I like that. I think like taking, just kind of taking those little moments and making them memorable by playing an I spy game or kind of all the things you recommended. And I really liked your advice on making play a priority. I think you've really helped illuminate how important play is and all the things that happen from confidence building to collaboration to that curiosity. I mean, I think that leads to lifelong success. So as parents just stopping and thinking it's okay for children to play and they can play alone. We don't always have to be involved. And we can play with them too. And that all of that is beneficial for them just to put them in the space so they're thinking and exploring and using their imagination. Yes, I agree. Play is so important. It is. And I think it's just maybe not used as much as it should be. Mm -hmm. And maybe not valued or, or prioritized as much as it should be. I agree. I think I didn't have all the insight into kind of the power of play in terms of what really happens with play. It's kind of something people, myself included, might think is just children do that. When, when they, they have time. When, when they have time and that we're doing the important work as parents. I'm cooking, I'm doing laundry, I'm doing all this, and they're just playing. But really stopping to think of all the benefits of that play, that it's confidence and collaboration and they're learning about math and thinking about if they're building a tower, like what does it take to make it 
a foundation successful and there's just so much that goes with that. That so. persistence too, especially in when you're playing by yourself. There's nobody there to help you when you can't get your blocks to stack or when the roof on the fort isn't staying. Like you have to persist and figure it out yourself and that's so valuable. <laughs> It is. I think that's so much value to play. It's just an important piece of early childhood. I and agree. Critical to their success. Well, Sarah, thank you for your time today and sharing your expertise. We really appreciate it. Um, so thank you for being here today. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This was, it was fun. Yes, it was. <laughs> we hope to have you back. I would love to. If you would like more information on this episode or need access to other resources mentioned, head to our website, www.newhorizonacademy.net. And if you have questions that you'd like us to answer and share with our experts, email us at parentingpickup at nhacademy.net.